CAT 2016 notification is out. What does this mean for preparation? And how should one prepare from now on based on what you have heard from CAT 2016 notification? Okay. To start with, first let's look at the facts. We're going to have three sections, three airtight time intervals. So practically taking three one hour exams and not one three hour exam. On screen calculator will be present. We'll have VARC, DILR and quant. Okay. Those are the facts. So looks like it's broadly similar to what we saw last year. They have not explicitly given the number of questions, but we can to start with we can assume it's going to be the same as last year. Right? So, what does this mean? A uh, bunch of small things. There's nothing new here from last year, but even for last year, these these inferences would have held good. First, reading is uber important. Right? Reading comprehension is going to dominate not just the verbal section but practically the whole paper. There is one thing that accounts for maximum share of this paper that is reading comprehension that's practically one fourth of the entire paper 75 percent of the verbal section so it's massive the best way to improve in rc is counterintuitively not just by doing rcs it is by reading reading a lot reading a lot of different things and right? so spend a lot of time reading starting today if you have not started so far and right? so that is very important becomes very very vital to be comfortable with the idea of reading a lot and right? so work on that if you have not started that so far second thing the airtight time compartment what does that mean when historically if someone was very good at one section and not so good at the other and you had an overall paper you could shift time to say what do i mean by that suppose you're very good at quant but not so good at verbal you could say look instead of putting my time equally between quant and verbal assuming da and l are sitting inside i'll spend only 45 percent of the time on quant 55 percent on verbal that way managing my scores and balancing them out a little bit that option is not available in one sense it is good you good news you don't have to worry about that parameter you don't have to continuously navigate across sections and worry about section cutoffs section cutoff are important but the uh, part of worrying about it is out of your hands you are taking three one hour exams it's not one three hour exams keep that in mind what is the bad news part of it those of you who have a very strong spike in one one section but not only about average below average in the other or one of the three then you, this is the time to address it i see this particularly true for a lot of students who are wizards in quant uh, but are not quite good at, at verbal then you should stop worrying about quant today and start focusing on verbal very aggressively great many get lots and lots of kicks by seeing a 99.9 99.95 in quant and don't really take the 78 in verbal to heart that doesn't work it is it is impractical to be the doyen in one section and, and average or just above average in another and so if you have imbalance in your natural strengths the time to address it is now you cannot address it by just shifting time across segments inside the exam hall so if you are a genius in one section stop trying to be established as the number one guy in the country in that section and then say look i i, I don't mind leaving out from 99.9 onwards leaving those gains on the table is completely fine if you can take your verbal from 80 to 94 in the time you take your quant from 99.5 to 99.7 the verbal effort is going to pay off more the easier wins are from 80 to 95 get the low hanging fruit in your weak section don't aggressively keep chasing your strong section just for to be just to get some street credit it is very silly it seems like it's a bleeding obvious input but i see so many students doing it because they're worried about losing out their advantage there's no joy in being a genius in one section if you get creamed in the other. So bring in that balance in preparation straight away. Final point, this data interpretation logical reasoning. Is it going to be tough? God knows. Really, nobody knows. So don't, don't fret about is it going to be easier than last year, tougher than last year. None of that. It may or don't give an unholy amount of time to that section which you think is going to be different from last year and then spend time on it. It may or may not happen. Have a natural balance. When I say natural balance, Make sure you spend more or less equal time across sections. I, I know that there's a temptation to do a lot more of quant. Uh, you probably need to do a little bit more of quant because it is vast. But don't spend time agonizing over every little tidbit in quant and lose out on the other two. Keep that in mind. And what should the preparation strategy be from now on? Nothing changes. So don't forget the fundamentals. Do a lot of practice questions. Read a lot. Read a lot and take a lot of mocks. There are four planks to the preparation. Basics, drill, reading, mocks. They don't change. Start taking mocks if you have not started till now. 
take mocks in there is no new format the last year's format is can, what we can all take for granted as this year's format so start taking mocks from about now start taking them very seriously don't wait till october to to take the mocks there's still more than 4 months left for this exam you need only 400 hours to prepare and crack this exam it is up to you to find 400 hours in 4 months even even narendra modi and barack obama can find that then they are very busy people so you can definitely extract 400 hours from your life in over 4 month period extract that and give this a good go best wishes